So Jeffrey was a little nervous when I sent in our presentation because I said, so for our 12-minute presentation, here's our 36 slides. So you're going to see a lot. Um, my presentation is a real personal story, and I've titled it The Boy Who Spoke Through His Art. So it started when my son, Devin, was born. In this picture right here, he was 12 months old, and um, there's a new baby in the audience. When you have that new baby and you hold him in your arms and you go, this baby's going to be the next president, or they're going to be a football player, or you have all these dreams, and it's amazing. But something happened around 15 months, and you can see it. There's no eye contact. That's the best picture we could ever get of him. And he started slipping away from us, and he delved into the world of autism. And Faith did a wonderful favor for me today, and she explained to you about a lot of what goes through a parent's mind or a sibling's mind. But overall, it was a devastating loss. It was horrible. Um, he became a child that I couldn't touch, I couldn't hug. He wouldn't look at me. There was all these things that were happening, and I was asking these questions. What was his life going to be like? How is he ever going to survive? Would he ever be normal? Would he, would he ever love me? Will he ever let me hug him? And would he ever grow to love me and other people, get married, have children, and all of that? So as you go through this journey, there's hurdles. And there's lots of hurdles. Lots of hurdles. First of all, you have to figure out where you're going to get help. Then there's a year-long waiting list, because at that time there was, sometimes 15-month-long waiting lists. And then you have to figure out how you're going to pay for it. And at the time, insurance wouldn't pay for it. And then you would get a lovely speech therapist that would say to you, you know what, he's been here for two years in speech. You might just have to face it, Mrs. Wilds. He will never speak. And the one thing, the one word that I wanted him to say was mom. And I didn't hear it for a very, very long time. And then, of course, there's all the fun stuff, like uncontrollable behavior. I think he got kicked out of a major league baseball game. No, he stopped the major league baseball game. And um, we, I think, landed two planes. Um, so yeah, there's lots of interesting stories I can tell you over a cocktail. Um, and then, of course, money. And he's, I used to buy him shirts for Princeton and Harvard because I'd say I, I'm spending as much money as if I could send him to Harvard, so you're going to wear a shirt. <laughs> and that's going to be great. Um, then you have people that just don't understand what he's going through, and many times they think he's just a bad child and that you need to spank him and you're a terrible mother. Um, finding the right doctors. And then, of course, I put insurance battles in here twice, purposely, because any of you that know, it is a huge battle. Devin was the poster child um, for our state attorney general suing Blue Cross Blue Shield for not covering child's mental health care. And we won. <laughs> but as you can imagine, that was short-lived, and there was more, and we won every one. But you just, you just have to know you're going to go through that. And then, of course, there's people that just don't understand and are very negative about it. And all of this gives you tons of anxiety. And the not being able to sleep at night, you're thinking about, I was always, time is running out. They've told me, if he doesn't get to a certain place by the age of five, we're screwed. Then I got to the age of five, and we hadn't mit hit those milestones. And so I fell apart. And I had really good friends that said, no, he's doing well. Keep going. Money, right? They're very expensive for treatment. Um, not sleeping at night, pure exhaustion. Am I doing the right thing? Am I picking the right treatments? Is all of this going to pay off? And I sometimes thought there was a special show like Survivor that was like Autism Survivor. And that I was on this island given this ultimate challenge, like here, you have to fix this child by this amount of time with this amount of money, go. <sighs> It was, it was hard. So the road to progress was hard and long, but I'm going to go back and quote Faith, because she's absolutely right. 
You had to have faith. I had to have faith that he would speak someday. Screw that speech therapist. I'm not taking what, <laughs> I'm not taking what she's going to say. You had to have a tribe. And at that point, there was no tribe for me. So I built a tribe. I put together a nonprofit of parents, and we had 700 families of Minnesota parents that were all helping each other. My tribe now is my Hatch tribe. And a lot of my Hatch brothers and sisters are here today. And you need those. And then, of course, you need process. And sometimes you don't know what the process is. Sometimes you have to build the process. So here's Devin. This is about eight years old. And he started doing art. And the one thing that I kept, like, not, I kind of ignored what he was doing with art because I'm like, he needs to speak. He needs to read. He needs to be functional. He needs to get a job someday. I don't want him to be a starving artist on the street. <laughs> and because of his art, in that unique capability, Nick came into his life. And Nick is a little boy um, who just, normal, who just loved Devin. He thought he was super brilliant and super smart. And they became friends. And actually the newspaper followed them for all the way through graduation. And they are still friends. And a lot of it was because he could see Devin's special strength. So I started to see that art was really incredible for him. And I pushed it. And I said, let's forget about what he's deficient at, and let's push his strength. And so I changed his summer plans. Instead of going to summer school, he went to summer art camp all summer long, long which he loved. And the thing that you can see, and you can see it in this picture, it looks like that 12-month-old picture, that eye contact, right? He's very proud. He's very proud of his art. So here's a quote from a judge that he won first prize in the Da Vinci Fest at his school, which he's competing against typical children, right? This piece is why I judge shows. Once in a while, someone so unique and valuable shows their work, and the viewer is transported to another dimension. As I studied this piece, I was drawn into Devin's world. Devin should continue doing his work. The world needs to know what he feels. This is only work that someone with Devin's unique perspective could provide. Thank you for sharing it with me. The director wrote to me and said, this judge is the hardest judge, and he's never given a per perfect sc score. And he gave Devin a perfect score. <laughs> and he was moved to tears, so he's crying too, which is even better. Um, when things like that started to happen, it was healing. It was those things that you cherished to hear about your child that never happened. And so today, Jeffrey, and peace, love, we're going to try an experiment. <laughs> this is, is going to be a first. Um, we're going to have Devin come out and talk about his art. And you're probably not going to understand anything he says, and that's OK. But try and listen with your eyes and your ears and hear what he has to say. So here comes Devin. Hi, my name is Devin. I like art. I am trying color painting. And creator, mm, check me, my art show. This is my stepmother. <laughs> this is my streaming light. He's tribute with tears. This is a Ava's flower. I painted ever since my Ava was born. And I lost my sister at Roma. I paint with chair. I ride a bicycle. I paint a tree and a pond. I make Mount Julie at Sonicans. I paint a garden party and, and insects and swarming and the people. I 
for Spider to get a to fly. <laughs> and make a dinosaur out clay. And make a bug catfish titty and United States Indians. <laughs> a pity, dark sky. He built it for house and lecture. I mean, here is Joy's garden. It is scary. I paid straight out. And that's like three and said in the end. I make tons of clock. It's an old clock. I paid it myself. I make Daisy and make some monsters and don't know. <laughs> Daisy making mini goofy <laughs> at the stamp and make some monster. <laughs> I'm making monster and shape. I make wow wow and like chicken and rainbow monkeys. I make devil face. In 1969, my dad was born. In 1972, my mom was born. In 1994, my parents was married. In 1995, I was born. In 2008, my Ava was born. In 2014, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> I paid the flower garden in the dark red, pink, white, and purple. I make turtles, turtles doll. He is flying. I make dark flower and chalkboard. Chuckle. And make it like a park and my like the John castle of a glass. And make a blue doll, it's blue stick, and man is a fighter. And make it socks maker and hold it in my socks. <laughs> this is color since Bella, you like base, pants, and casual. Uh, I'm trying him there. He's behind a tree. This is Bahamas base. I paid it. This is Prometheus head. <laughs> At Clay, she's like an alien. Did you, my art show? Enjoy! Thank you. So who here thinks we should send this videotape to that speech therapist that said he could never talk? Thank you so much. Today was all about pushing boundaries and getting him to do more things and share his world. And what was unique about today is he was extremely connected to the audience and connected to people that's very hard for us to get out of him. It's important to tell the stories, even when they're really difficult. And it makes you cry in front of 400 people. <laughs> it's opening yourself up, a very vulnerable part of yourself, just letting people experience your world a little bit. Art is not just therapy, it's also a doorway into seeing into someone's soul, their personality, and their potential. And that's why I love so much what Peace Love is doing. 
it's obviously really apparent in Devin's work that that is his vehicle it's for speech. Speech. Speech, for telling your voice. Mm -hmm. When you gave your speech today, what did it feel like? Happy. Made you happy? Yes. What do you think the audience thought? Like it. Does it make you feel proud? Yes, proud.